I had Malik Cunningham in my New England Patriots 5th, 6th, 7th round and UDFA target video, where I thought Bill Belichick might take him with one of their 6th round picks. Malik has always been one of the top 10 dual threat quarterbacks in college football, and even had a chance to shine as a redshirt freshman. He went on to show growth in subsequent seasons to ultimately break Lamar Jackson's school record by accounting for 120 career touchdowns. However, the growth trajectory at Louisville was not as steep as some were hoping, and Malik appeared to plateau going into his senior year, where his deep ball and accuracy were little suspect, and his tendency to stare down his targets led to a notable amount of interceptions. Moreover, he missed a good chunk of the season due to a shoulder injury. It was looking like Malik's draft stock was free-falling after he decided not to participate in the Fenway Bowl. However, Malik was able to recover some of that value after having a solid week at the Senior Bowl, and he had the third fastest time for a QB at the NFL Combine with a 4.53 effort and a 1.51 10-yard split. Yet, Malik was not able to bolster his stock high enough with that 40 time and went undrafted, but he was awarded with one of the best UDFA contracts by the New England Patriots who has a strong history of having a UDFA make the roster and converting players to new positions at the NFL level. Malik's running skills not only makes him a threat as a QB, but the Patriots might see if he can be a threat as a running back or potentially as a wideout. If you watch Malik's college tape, you will see that this guy is a natural playmaker and has a pulse for the game. So I think he has a chance to make the roster and could be a thought-provoking weapon for Bill O'Brien who could figure out a way to utilize his talents. Before we talk X's and O's, let's take a look at Malik's production. As a redshirt freshman, Malik played in three games where he was 40 for 67, 473 yards, one TD, and one INT. On the ground, 79 attempts for almost 500 yards, which is like a 6.3 yard average, and he had five rushing touchdowns. His sophomore year, Cunningham had 11 games where he had a roughly 62% completion percentage. He went over 2,000 yards in the air, 22 touchdowns with only five INTs. On the ground, he had 122 rushes for 482 yards with six TDs. He started all 11 games in 2020, throwing for over 2,600 yards with a 64% completion percentage, 20 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and running for another 7 TDs. Cunningham started all 13 games in 2021, where he went 209 for 337, which is around 62%, nearly 3,000 yards in the air, 19 TDs, 6 INTs, while also leading all FBS quarterbacks with over 1,000 yards on the ground and 20 touchdowns. In 2022, he missed some time with a shoulder injury, but still led the Cardinals with 12 rushing scores, while passing for 1,568 yards with roughly 62% completion percentage and 8 touchdowns against 5 INTs. As I previously mentioned, Cunningham broke Lamar Jackson's school record by accounting for 120 career touchdowns. All this guy has done is produce. Through his four-year starting career at Louisville, Cunningham amassed 9,664 yards passing, 70 passing TDs, and 29 interceptions. On the ground, he produced 3,184 yards and 50 touchdowns. So nearly 13,000 yards of offense and 120 TDs. This guy is a playmaker. Malik's highlights were abundant during his time at Louisville. He was a ridiculously efficient passer in 2019 and accumulated 20 touchdowns on the ground in 2021. This production was fueled by his absurd level of athleticism and Malik's creation talent. As a passer, Malik has good pocket management and was able to forecast route breaks and is capable of placing the ball where it needs to be. His intermediate throws were probably his sweet spot where he was able to layer and was a quick decision maker when he was in rhythm. However, he tends to throw flat-footed and he can sail the ball. In terms of arm strength, I think it's better than advertised. It isn't great, but it is a catchable ball. 
The question is, can he improve? Now, when you throw in his running ability, Malik showed his competitive toughness and his presence to stress defenses from an RPO and zone read looks. When he would call his own number, Malik shows an instant burst to win the foot race pursuit to the corner. His vision as a ball carrier might be his best attribute, where he has NFL caliber instincts like a running back in the open field. Watching his tape, you can see how he can consistently evade tacklers in all spaces of the field. On the downside, Malik is a thin build with narrow hips and articulated joints. This allows him to be athletic, however, it also puts him at risk for non-contact and contact injuries. In terms of passing, Malik was not able to build upon his 2019 season. In addition, he has strong tendencies to stare down his targets and is giving plenty of indicators to the coverage. His vision for the field is not a strong suit and his progression work is a problem. Malik's deep ball is rough, where he completed just 31% of his deep throws in 2022. Plus, his mechanics break down when under pressure. Now, let's talk some measurables to remind us why he's in New England. Malik is 6 foot, 192 pounds, his 9.5 inch hands, his arm length is 31 3 8, his wing is 75 3 8, his 40 yard, 4.53, 95th percentile for a QB, 95th percentile for a QB, 20 yard, 2.63, his 10 yard, 1.51, 99. His 10 yard, 1.51, 99th percentile. So, he's an undersized QB and he's fast. We don't know about any of the other tests because he opted out of them. Watching his tape though, I think it's safe to say that he is agile and explosive. How can the Patriots use him? Is he a triple threat? Well, my first thought for Malik is that he can be the next Jacoby Myers for New England. Yes, I don't expect Malik's time as a QB to be instantly converted to a receiver position because we don't know if the guy can catch the ball. But I see how Malik could have a similar path with the QB to wide receiver conversion, which will allow Malik to be on the roster as emergency third QB. The Patriots tried this with Miami's Derrick King, but it didn't work out. But that doesn't mean Malik can't. The other clear option is using him as a running back, which wouldn't be crazy considering they didn't draft one this year, and the guy has numbers good enough to be one at the NFL level. Of course, there is the idea the Patriots do see him as a QB that could be a backup role or could possibly be brought in to run a unique offense for a series or two. Or, it really is just a combination of these three roles, and he becomes another gadget player that can come in to bring a unique talent to the field to cause some chaos. If you've been watching my recent videos, you would know that I've been pounding the table for the Patriots to have some trick or gadget plays, positions, packages, etc. to put some points on the board. Just like Scotty Washington, Johnny Lumpkin, Demario Douglas, Malik is going to make defensive coordinators go on high alert when they step on the field because he is bringing a unique set of talents that will create options and mismatches. Again, the NFL is becoming more and more of mismatches rather than just straight up X's and O's. Having Malik lined up in the backfield right next to Mack in the gun will make the DC wonder, is Malik a running back or are we looking at a dual QB threat here? If he's out wide or maybe in trips, is he a receiver or is this some sort of wildcat situation? Late in the game trying to run out the clock, you may want to have a Malik triple option package ready. You think I'm crazy about these ideas? Well, don't forget the Philly special, where Trey Burton, a one-time college quarterback, connected with Nick Foles for a touchdown right before halftime in Super Bowl 52. Also, don't forget all the different versions of double passes we've seen over the past decade. Don't think the Patriots will do it? Well, think about how many games the Patriots won with Josh McDaniels running a trick play to get up one score and change the tide of the game. Other teams have implemented these ideas. Remember the Drew Brees and Taysom Hill package? One year with the Saints, Hill averaged nearly 13 offensive snaps a game, lined up as a QB, a receiver, and even as a tight end. 
for the final 14 games, he'll finish the season with 37 rushes, 7 pass attempts, and 7 targets as a receiver. In the Saints' two playoff games, Hill ran three more times and threw a pass and even caught a TD in the NFC Championship game. Hill also tied for the Saints' lead in special team snaps with 343, ran back 14 kickoffs, and even blocked a punt that was recovered for a touchdown. Why can't Bill unleash a backup quarterback on game days and not have him merely holding a clipboard while taking up an active roster spot? Now, Mac might be hesitant to break his own rhythm during the game at first, but he should embrace the idea of making the most of Malik's potential versatility that can also open up some opportunities for the team and keep the defense on their heels. Yes, this is all speculation, but I'm simply trying to illustrate some options here beyond Malik just being a practice squad simulator for Lamar. I'll say it again, the Patriots will need to get creative this season if they want to have a shot at the playoffs. Malik would be a great Swiss Army knife to have in your back pocket to find a way to get a few touchdowns this season, which can be the difference between a 7-10 and 10 season and a 10-7 and 7 season. So, what do you think about Malik? Will he make the team? Can he be another gadget player? Where would he play? Is he just a practice squad guy? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.